Intensiv Helen Stangeland, grundare till Helena Hard. Thank you for being here and being invited uh, to talk about Helen and Hard. I will start with giving you a small introduction to what we mean with um, sustainable architecture or the approach that we have. And then I will speak about um, some projects that has mainly to do with uh, building in timber. Um, Helen and Hard was started in Stavanger. 25 years ago, and uh, together with my partner Reinhard Kropf and me, we have today uh, office both in Oslo and in Stavanger, and 25 people are working with us. Um, our approach to sustainability is what we call a relational design, which is, of course, a very big and general world, but to us it means something very specific. It's an approach that is inspired from systems thinking and ecology. And it takes as a start point that there always is a given resource household, human, material, environmental, uh, which we can listen into and we can find creative so uh, synergies with these resources. So this is a basic start point, both for reducing our carbon footprint but it's also um, a way to create a unique and site-specific an answer uh, with architecture. And using timber is, as a construction material is a, is a very essential um, to this approach. And I will come back to why. We have worked with a very um, diverse approach to timber. Uh, what is our main interest is, of course, course, to use structural timber and make that visible and even use it as a design driver for architecture. And this means that we have to engage with it from the very beginning. So these are different examples of um, use of timber, uh, from using natural timber, exploring what we have of industrialized components, uh, how we can make free forms in timber, also how we can compose components of timber, and also the very big um, challenge we have, uh, how we can use timber in more commercial housing projects. Um, yes, this is, an, this is a, our examples of how we approach uh, timber buildings. So, we started to work in Stavanger, which is a town that has a very large timber heritage center. And the first years we made a lot of transformation work. And this was transforma transformation of log houses. We learned a lot of, of this um, small uh, refurbishments. So when we started to build new structures, it was a very natural thing to do for us. And over the years, we have come to just um, see that timber has more and more qualities, uh, not only because it stores carbon, it has uh, an, a very good uh, qualities that gives indoor climate, uh, regulates indoor climate, it speaks to all our senses, it has a very rich application, which we will see. It's mostly locally available. It's easy to process and change for the user. And then maybe more importantly um, is that it has a very interesting structure in itself. We can learn from trees, we can learn from the an anatomy, that their growth patterns, and how they are built up as a coherent system, starting with the cells, the fiber, the roots, the trunk, the branches and the leaves, which then create a whole, and this is something we have been very inspired by. Um, so it is, it is working with the, the visible structure, which inform this main, the, the main spatial experiential quality that is at our um, 
which is our, in our interest when we work with this material. Um, and to obtain this, we have to work, of course, together with um, suppliers, engineers, consultants, even the sawmills. Uh, and, and it triggers a kind of um, very col collaborative process from the very start. This is a very early project we did. Um, it was conceived in 2004, finished in 2008. It's a pulpit rock mountain lodge. Um, it has 28 sleeping rooms and a um, restaurant. Uh, this is a visit on the factory, in fact, when we should build this, um, we thought it could be built in massive timber, but as the, as the tourist asso association, which was the client, didn't want any glue in the timber, they wanted a completely natural wall, we had to deal with this system, which is... Um, uh, consists of, of different layers of wood, which is doubled together with beach doubles and does not have glue in between the layers. So it has a quite of kind of challenge when it comes to load bearing um, capacity. But when we saw this uh, way of layering timber, uh, it gave us an idea that this could be the way of thinking about the whole structure of this building as a, as a, a different layers of planks that are exposed. And in the, this way, we could also solve the, the bigger spans. We shifted the dialog diagonal layers on the outside so they could serve as bracings between the wall element and the beam element. And thereby, it also created this kind of characteristic geometry and, and, um, and experience of, of the main space. So these ribs also then um, mark the sleeping, the rhythm of the sleeping rooms above um, the main, these main uh, common spaces. Um, moving on to the next project, we had this experience with the uh, ribs with us. This is a library in Venezuela, and we were interested in um, developing the idea of a structural rib uh, further. So here we started already from the very beginning to see how the rib could also um, contain more functions like the furniture, the infrastructure, the lighting, the ventilation. And this small sketch here shows how many consultants are engaged in finding out how we can make this quite simple element work but with integrating all these different um, parameters. So we made also a one-to-one -one test of it, uh, which served um, very much the process because everyone knew that they couldn't add anything. Everything has to be fitted within this rib. So these are 23 different ribs, which are adjusted both to what happens on the outside, because it's an infill between two existing buildings, and what happens in the inside. So it's a, it's a double adjustment process, which gives each specific rib its form. So this library is, uh, in fact, giving the cultural school and the existing cinema a kind of new entrance hall and a common a uh, cafe in the beginning, and then uh, the rest of the functions of the library are gathered, gathered at the periphery of the big common space, which expands from the <coughs> urban square. This is the very end of it, and the ribs are cladded with CLT panels um, to provide the walls. And here you see a picture from the upper level, and looking back out to the square again. And this is, this is a library that has become very, very popular um, from the user's side, but also from uh, visitors. Um, and it's, it's a very special room. Uh, we think it has to do with the, both with these niches that create 
um, the possibility to, to enter the walls and at the same time become part of the bigger space. It also has to do with this rhythm of artificial light integrated in the rib and the natural light coming through. Um, and this light strips that all the time um, describes the variations of each rib and, and kind of make a, a link between the outer space and the very intimate inner space. And the exterior is, is ex completely different. It's cladded with uh, glue laminated uh, panels that give si sunshade and also have different color on each side, so the building slightly change its appearance. And this is my uh, favorite picture. It's a picture from 9 o'clock um, February Monday morning. And it's showing uh, how people are using it. And they use it a lot. It, they use it as, um, as, a, as a place where people can gather. Um, there are conferences there, weddings, but most of all it's a, it's a place where children come and stu students even to study. And it's an interesting discussion going on um, around this library because uh, you have on the one side the people that think it is much too specific and every library today should be extraordinary, flexible, because it should, one think that maybe the books will disappear, so what do you do with this library, which has so many shelves <laughs> and they're all built. Um, but we will see, that so far so good, it works very well. And I will um, jump to another way of thinking about um, timber structures, which is um, using components, components that exist. And um, this is again a picture from a tree where you see the fiber structure, which are hollow tubes. And there are um, these interesting products on the market, which are box elements, which you can fill with different uh, materials, insulation or uh, infrastructure, if you need that. And we think it's a very interesting um, element to work with. Uh, to make this small entrance hall, we, we started off with such a box element, uh, which we found uh, on the market, and then we went in a dialogue with the people that produce it and asked if they could slightly alter it so that we could stack them on top of each other instead of lying them after each other. And thereby we could make this um, connection between two office buildings and twist these walls and create two symmetrical entrances, um, which has an overhanging roof and then also provide the the, the, the covering uh, on each side to protect uh, against fire um, towards the facades and create an overlight in the middle and again also use that for smoke evaporation. So this is one single element which then is um, used in, in many different ways. And it's uh, completely finished um, surfaces. So when once it is put on up, uh, a lot of a lot is done. It's all mounted in eight, eight days, and it has this very very um, high quality finished surface. And we can also make then benches and shelves and the reception zone out of the same element. A bit. Then I will move to uh, some experiments we have made uh, with using natural timber. Uh, this is not a new thing. Uh, 
boat builders did this uh, for a long since uh, since yeah since the very beginning of building boats. And this uh, picture I found in fact visiting uh, Vasa Museum um, in 2010. And we got the idea that this must be possible to make using digital materials, digital uh, fabrication and digital tools today. So this was uh, a um, project we did when we were invited to make a pavilion in the v &A in London. Uh, and we decided to use uh, pollarded ash trees that we cut in two and um, scanned so that we could, could work with them digital and then find a way to gather them to make a space and also then use um, a digital fabrication to mill out the interior and provide a perfect joining together of the trees which then provide its stability structurally. So we kept the roughness on the outside and then um, milled it out in the inside and also then uh, ho made holes so that you can climb on the inside up. All the parts of the trees were then used. The branches were cut and woven together as a canopy and the chopped and um, milled um, Pieces from the mill process were gathered in, in baskets and to provide the soft um, uh, flooring so that the, the children can fall on. It was a very interesting experiment and we try now again and again to see if this is possible to transfer into um, a, a bigger building project. So far it's um, basically mostly done uh, with furnitures and interiors. This is made, this table is made out of four branch trunk connections, if you can recognize them, and then they are put together. Then I will move to the more challenging areas where to use timber, and it is in the commercial housing um, market. Uh, CLT uh, systems are starting to be um, more relevant and I think also in Sweden you have produced quite a lot of housing with CLT lately um, and this is good. Uh, we think it's also possible to explore new systems. CLT is a certain um, way of building which is still leaving uh, also with the kind of prefab big panel that you can do everything with. Uh, and it's not completely smart in terms of how much timber you, ex you in fact are using when you, in addition, need to insulate and so on. So we are exploring um, other systems and we do this in a, in a self-initiated project, which is a um, co-housing project. And we also studied here um, the success factors for doing such a co-living um, project. I will not go too much into that because it's another story, but um, this is the project. It's 39 uh, dwellings for people that are interested in sharing. So they are have a smaller unit themselves and they have um, 580 square meter with common space, which they decide what to use to. And the structure is, is very much um, inspired by the vernacular structure around this site. Small footprints, two and three and four stories. And it's also the log house structure that has inspired us um, to make a new building system, which I come back to. Here you see uh, alterations of how this uh, squared footprint um, master plan has gone through a lot of uh, iterations to find its um, best answer and also a drawing I did. Um, it's a master plan. It's a drawing of the master plan showing how I tried to explore the in-between spaces in such a dense structure. Uh, they are as important as the inner space. And we had this idea that 
the outdoor space and the in, 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 indoor space uh, should be equally furnished and taken care of in this project. This is a plan layout of um, one of the stories in the co-living project where the units are gathered around common space, outdoor space, half climatized space, indoor space. Um, and this is another drawing which tries to explain the combination of thinking in systems, um, taking into consideration the smallest building component which has to kind of fit with the overall master plan, but also understanding that this project has a lot to do with how people are going to live and influence this structure. So here is the element that we have um, developed together with a network in Switzerland. It consists of two layers of CLT um, boards doubled together and filled with insulation. And one element is so light that one person can carry it. So you can think about do-it-yourself uh, process here. Do I start and make y a lot of Here You have time? Um, no time left, but finish off <laughs> what you're talking about, and then we will just, it will be okay. fun to bring in some questions from the audience okay. too. So just finish off and we I finish off. So there is a system which is also then the creating a special entrance situation, and we have tested it with the future users that are interested. Um, and here you see a picture of the common space of a shared space. I will jump then, uh, because I just wanted to show a very short Maybe the, the, the most recent project we did is a, is a bank in timber, and it's under construction now. And it's very interesting to see how um, it can also be applied in, in, in a completely new building type. I think it's the only bank in timber in North Europe. It's a building with 14,000 square meter of office space. And um, we use here industrialized um, components on the market. Uh, we just slightly mar alter them. And we think it's extremely interesting that you can, um, in fact, also be, um, if we, we could prove that to build in timber is not much more expensive. Uh, in the total cost of the bank, it, it, it just is 1.5% one, 1 um, more expensive. So the bank decided to go for this. Um, here you see a mock-up we made. Um, it's a very simple system with columns and double beams. And then you have the different layers added to provide for flooring and infrastructure. Thank you. Yes, you yes. stopped me <laughs> there. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. It is the absolute worst mission ever to interrupt some bump, uh, someone, but I think you've had a wonderful presentation and uh, it would be nice just to bring in some questions from the audience. Okay, <clears throat> we, have a, we have a question here about, um, as you can find trees almost anywhere, do you locally source the material for your buildings or is it harvested and produced and transported or how does it work? Oh, that's very different, but we use local timber where we can and we, have, we are planning to have our own forest. Company. <laughs> you are? Seriously? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, that will be the, the last question. Thank you so much, Sylvie Lien Stangeland. Thank you.